Good morning, motivation team. How y'all doing today? I hope y'all had a great day yesterday. Today is Tuesday. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Thank the Lord that you woke up today. Go tell your family you love. Go tell them good morning. Go ahead and invite me in on the video. Today going to be a quick video. And we can go ahead and get started. You know what I'm saying? So today, verse of the day, we got Romans 12, 1 through 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Now, I really don't think I need to explain it, but what's been on my mind to say is that when you actually start following God and just having faith in everything, whatever you can't control, let it get it out your hands, put it in God's hands. But just do what you can do. Do your part and have faith. When you do that, you your 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 mind slowly starts getting away from all your wants, all your desires, because you start being grateful for what's in front of you. You start being grateful for what you have. So yeah, so that's just something to think about. And let's go ahead and get to today's word. Now we finna start off in chapter at Matthew chapter 21. I'm gonna go ahead and go straight to verse 8. A very large crowd spread their clothes on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna, the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowd answered, This is Jesus, the prophet, the Nazareth in Galilee. So they had did all this to honor Jesus coming into Jerusalem. Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it into a den of robbers. The merchants had operated in the outer courts of the temple, the only area where the Gentiles could come and pray. This place of prayer was made into a marketplace and a dishonest one. Anyone who bought and sold in the outer courts made it impossible for any seeking Gentile to come pray. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did and the children shouting in the temple courts, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. After all that, that was going on around the temple, the blind and the lame, they still came for they 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 still came to Jesus to get healed. And the children, even the children, they were indignant. The children were indignant, and even with greed and theft going through the temple, they still worship Jesus. The children now. So the children they were indignant because they seen because they seen all the greed and theft going on around the temple, but that didn't stop them from praising Jesus. Early in the morning, as Jesus was on his way back to the city, he was hungry. Seeing a fig tree by the road, he went up to it, but found nothing on it except leaves. Then he said to it, "May you never bear fruit again." Immediately the tree withered. Wither means to become dry and shrivel. As soon as he seen that tree. A fig is a pear. I, I looked it up. They said a fig was a pear. And he was, and he was like, shoot, sure, what's the point of you being here? If you're supposed to be a fig tree and you ain't got nothing but leaves on you, what's the point of you being here? So when the disciples saying this, they were amazed and said, how did the fig tree wither so quickly? They asked. Jesus replied, truly I tell you, if you have faith and do not doubt, not only can you do what was done to the fig tree, but also you can say to this mountain, Go throw yourself into the sea and it will be done. If you believe you will receive whatever you ask whatever you ask in prayer. I gotta have faith, man. Nothing is too big for true faith to obtain. But the faith must have a promise to lean on. Jesus entered the temple courts, and while he was teaching, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him. By what authority are you doing these things? They asked. And who gave you this authority? Jesus replied, I will also ask you one question. If you answer me, I will tell you by what authority I am doing these things. John's baptism, where did it come from? Was it from heaven or of human origin? They discussed it among themselves and said, if we say from heaven, he will ask them, 
why didn't you believe him? But if we say for, of human origin, we are afraid of the people for they are all hold that John was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we don't know. Then he said, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. So Jesus, he didn't show them no patience. People that tried to question him, he questioned them right back. And he wasn't, he wasn't going for none of that because they were, cause they always trying to trap, in his, trap him in his own words. He wasn't going for none of that. We have verse 28. We have verse 28, the parable of the two sons. This is what a parable is, a heavenly meaning story. What do you think? There was a man who had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work today in the vineyard. I would not, he answered. But later he changed his mind and, he, and went. Then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. He answered, I will, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two sons, which of the two did what his father wanted? The first they answered. Jesus said to them, truly, I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you to show you the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him, but the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. And even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe him. It's a lot of people that's out here that's just like the second son. Like how the second son said he was going to do it, but he never did. Some people would say that they would get right with Jesus. But they never do. Some people say that, that some people talk about God's work. Some people may keep up the appearance of the religion, but their heart is not with Christ. Their heart is not right with God. They think that words and promises are enough. The point of this parable is what matters is living for God. It is not saying the right word. Yeah, the religious leaders were good at talking righteous, but their unrepentant hearts showed the sinners that are repentant will enter the kingdom before them. So the religious leaders, they religious leaders, but also they may be doing wrong. They may not be too right in the heart with God. The people, but the people that are sinners and they repent, they're gonna be the ones that they're gonna be in the kingdom before, before the before the religious leaders, because they heart right and they and they repented. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard. He put a wall around it, dug wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he rented the vineyard to some farmers and moved to another place. When, when the harvest time approached, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his fruit. The tenants seized his servants. They beat one, killed another, and stoned the third. Then he sent other servants to them more than the first time, and the tenants treated them the same way. Last of all, he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. But when the tenants saw, but when the tenants saw son, but when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, "This is their heir. Come, let's kill him and take his inheritance." So they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? He will bring those wretches to a wretched end, they replied, and he will rent the vineyard to other tenants who will give him his share of the crop at harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? The Lord has done this and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people who will produce his fruit. Any Anyone who falls on this stone will be broken into pieces. Anyone whom it falls will be crushed. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard Jesus' parables, they knew he was talking about them. They looked for a way to arrest him, but they were afraid of the crowd because the people held that he was a prophet. Jesus, he warned the religious leaders. If they continue to reject God and his Messiah, they could expect God to pass the leadership of his work on earth. And, and they knew that Jesus was talking about them because they wouldn't have tried to get, to get him arrested. So that's where they ended it. And that's where I'm going to end it today. But I apologize for the short video. Keep praying. Keep counting your blessings. Everything going to be all right. This channel will get better. I will get better at certain things. I will get better with the editing. I will get better with certain things. I mean, I am actually, I am actually working on something better. And I'm trying to think of a way to make everything flow i'm trying to think of a flow so intros might change outros might change things that i'm doing may change 
This is all a work in progress. So y'all, thank y'all for sticking with me. Thank y'all for supporting. Y'all be easy. Y'all have a blessed day. I'm out.